Hey everyone, welcome back to Bewitching Brain. We're so happy to have you with us and encourage you to subscribe and share. Take good care, be safe, and help others be safe. In the last video, we talked about how our nervous system turns an external touch, vibration, or pressure stimulus into a signal that we can consciously be aware of and react to. In this video, we will discuss sensation of pain and temperature. The receptors and pathways involved in pain and temperature are actually pretty similar to the stuff we talked about last time. You might think that pain is bad and something to always be avoided. Although this may be true to some extent, pain is also extremely protective. Without pain, we could easily injure ourselves without knowing it. For example, you might be stepping on a sharp piece of glass and have no idea. While the pain is very unpleasant, it will spur you on to lift up your foot and pay a visit to urgent care to get the wound cleaned and perhaps have stitches in, or, in order to avoid an infection, which could be very serious and possibly even life-threatening. So let's start with sensory receptors for pain and temperature, and then we'll describe how the signal is transmitted to the brain for processing. Sensory pain receptors are called nociceptors. There are two different types of nociceptors, which each fire action potentials in response to distinct types of injurious stimuli. First of all, we have mechanonociceptors. These receptors respond to significant force or pressure. Perhaps you are at the gym and you accidentally let a weight drop on your foot. Ouch. Then we have C polymodal nociceptors. These receptors respond to injurious chemicals such as hydrochloric acid. They also respond to very high heat, which could damage your tissues if you don't move away. These would be activated when you accidentally touch a hot pan without oven mitts on. Sensory receptors for temperature are called thermoreceptors. Thermoreceptors normally fire action potentials at a constant rate. This is occurring when you are sitting at home at room temperature. When the temperature in your environment changes, thermoreceptors begin firing at a faster rate. There are both cooling and warming thermoreceptors. As you would expect, cooling receptors fire more rapidly when the temperature becomes cooler, while warming receptors fire more rapidly when it gets warmer. You might imagine you are partaking in the slightly insane Nordic tradition of sitting in a ridiculously hot sauna in the middle of January and then jumping outside in the snow to cool off. When you initially get in the sauna, your warming receptors start firing very rapidly until you can no longer stand it and you run outside. Your warming receptors then begin to fire more slowly and then at their original constant rate as your skin cools down. Once your skin gets cool enough, your cooling receptors begin firing and eventually you start getting cold again and create the sauna. The cycle continues. So what happens once the thermoreceptor or nociceptor changes its rate of firing or begins firing? The sensory nerve receives the action potential and sends the action potential up its peripheral axon all the way to the cell body in the dorsal root ganglion. Notice that this slide is exactly the same as in the touch, vibration, and pressure video. From the DRG, the central process of the sensory nerve enters the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. Again, the dorsal horn is towards the back and is responsible for transmitting sensory information. So this is the slide where the pathway for pain and temperature is slightly different than the pathway for touch, vibration, and pressure. In the first pathway, Recall that the sensory neuron traveled all the way up the spinal cord within the dorsal column and then met up with a second neuron high in the spinal cord or in the brainstem. However, in this pathway, the sensory neuron has its axon terminals in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. The dendrites of the second neuron receive the, neuron, receive the signal within the dorsal horn. The second neuron then crosses to the other side of the spinal cord. It then travels up the spinal cord and ends up in the thalamus. The third neuron meets up with the second neuron in the thalamus and sends the signal to the somatosensory cortex for processing. 
Again, remember that the somatosensory cortex is located within the parietal lobe. Once again, a huge thanks to Dr. Teresa Patatucci for her spinal cord illustrations. Next time, we will be discussing the sensation of smell. Thanks for listening, Brainiacs. Tune in next time for more.